you make your way out of the crowded um, inn. Um, I don't know how much you guys have been drinking. I didn't drink at all. Just one. 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 Quite comfortably. <laughs> and make your way towards the stable, and in your case, your house. house. Still shack. Yeah, it's not much of a house. Would you like to describe it, Bones? Sure. So, I've got, uh, well, when he's at Zach, is it Shack? That's really not that far off. Um, I should probably describe the buildings in general. Mm, in this region, wood is pretty scarce, so most of the buildings are probably cheap stone, plastered together, and limed over, and that is whitewashed. There's enough grain that um, wicker could possibly be made, so cheaper houses are probably made of that. And there are certainly plenty of thatched roofs. Imagine a Tudor style, whitewashed with um, heavy beams, except in the case of this town, those beams are replaced with sturdy stone constructions, which aren't there. White houses, brown straw roofs, built tight together. Most um, buildings are built in sort of square blocks facing one of the main streets, of which there are only a handful. This town is probably about 500 people, maybe 600. So it's big for Siegwards Groft. But um, compared to Hohenhoff, it's small. Tiny. It's tiny. Um, Siegfried's uh, Hohenhoff was divided up into quarters. This is divided up into neighborhoods by like street. Most buildings are divided up into very thin sort of shops, with higher floors being sort of overhanging into the street. Um, sometimes close enough that people can high five or shake hands um, between them from one side of the street to the opposite one, which makes adults really easy, I guess. Um, <laughs> And hanging laundry a pain in the ass because you can only get like two shirts in, mm. if even. But uh, that ground floor, very thin, maybe two meters wide a shop, just enough for sellers to have their choice goods on this morning with most of their stock further in the shop. They have to go back and fetch it. It's late enough at this point that those shops are all closed and the streets are fairly barren. Um, you might pass the occasional sort of wild dog wandering the street or urchin or, or homeless person to trying to sleep and probably succeeding because it's very quiet now you may see the odd person peeing or, or, or defecating on the other side of the street as they sort of wander home from having far too many pints in the bar but you make your way quietly um, feet uh, crunching on sort of dirt and gravel of the street these streets are definitely not paved um, with cobblestones or flagstones or anything like that towards your house which you can now describe Okay, so it's changed in description a little bit off of that, but sure, that's or, fine. I mean, that's why I wanted to do yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. So this would be a building at either the end of a street or um, an alleyway cutting through one of your longer sections of multiple houses stacked up beside you. Sure. Type of um, deal. A lot of them are built with like sort of squares with courtyards in the center, so you could have a house in the back of one if that appeals to you. Yeah, all right, then we'll do... Courtyard gardens in a lot of the case, because people are raising animals and, and vegetables and, and fruit in the in the city, because... So would you have your shop window facing the you, you, inside? You'd have, you'd have the shop windows out. facing the main street, and, and then, then as you went in, you'd have sort of storage rooms, and then like maybe kitchens for the block, and like housing units deeper in the streets. Okay. But it's... Thinner alleyways. So we're cutting down one of those thinner alleyways, although this one is probably wide enough that you can fit a single cart down it type of thing. It's not pretty a big wide. One. Yeah. Um, because it does lead into the back stables where a couple of these shops probably cart their stuff in and pull them into For sure. the uh, storage. There may, there may very well be some storage carts sort of moving things at night yeah. when the streets are less crowded. So yeah, we're cutting down one of those back alleys off of a butcher shop being one of the main uh, shops that would feed off of this courtyard. Okay. So we cut down that back alley into, uh, and then along the back of that shop, there's a staircase that leads both up, and then if you go around to the farther side, it leads down into a cellar where you would cold store meat yep. for longer periods of time. I indicate that I'm going to go up because I live on one of the upper floors. Stables right off of this back you staircase. You indicate with a hand gesture? Yeah. Okay. Ah, thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, that is in there. Good <coughs> night. There is a donkey in there. Mm. Do not get anywhere near its pen. Um, there's maybe a couple of hay bales. Do you need it needed trains? I'm very good at training donkeys. Well, we have tried. Uh, I would just suggest you stay away from it and don't spook. Give me five hours. I, no, 
Please don't f- screw up my donkey. Okay. <laughs> I've tried. Okay. <laughs> I could probably do it this Just point. don't spook it. And it's not going to be too comfortable with random people just running in and making a lot of noise in the stable at night. So, sorry to interrupt. Do you have animal training? I do. Do you want to use that to try and train your donkey out of its habit? Not right now. Okay. I'll probably do it. Continue. In a couple Continue. Times. So, yeah, it just leads off of. So you got the cold storage going down, the stable on the main level, and then apartments above, or small housing above type of thing, and that's where I'm going. Uh, if you guys are just crashing there, I'll be down in that stable pretty early in the morning, and I'll wake you up there. Very good point that you, you mentioned that your housing is probably above ground level on the second story. A lot of houses are on the second story. Um, this is beneficial because you can have your bathrooms leaning out onto the street, which is something you guys have sort of walked through. I mentioned people urinating and defecating in the streets. A lot of houses are built on the second floors because it means that your toilet can flush, quote unquote, quote unquote, directly into the street where the uh, gong farmer can pick it up the next morning or whenever they happen to be working. Which is, again, another thing you might have seen happening late at night, collecting the night soil, to use an expression. So you two are making your way towards the stables. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition to his donkey, there are probably a number of other horses or donkeys or other um, animals who are yeah. stabled here who it's, are not his. Yeah, it's not a big stable, but it would feed off of all the shops that yeah. feed into this courtyard. So right a lot now. of car- uh, caravan animals who have haul of goods are stabled yeah. here. There would be two that are... He did not what? mention the name of the particular animal. Neither of you can read, so you probably couldn't tell which animal it was anyway by the sign. Definitely not. But you can sort of stay out of their pens and sleep in sort of the muddy hallway between them yeah. uh, between the various pens on the on the one side I guess it would be so you might have trouble finding that hay there might be like a single bale if you want to come and cuddle um, at the end alright friends I'll cuddle up on some hay wonderful I'm very soft and cuddly well, try anything and I'll tell you <laughs> does any of you get a good look at that map I'm just going to be out of halfway up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Or you, you talk, you're asking? Yeah. Okay. This is before you entered the... Of course, uh, many the squiggles, thing. some lines, words uh, that I didn't I, understand. I mean more the words. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that uh, that duck man uh, isn't clear on all the all the symbols. Great. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> we'll talk more about it in the morning, but I definitely want to get my hands on that before he kills us all. Yes, uh, he's very confident, I'm not so sure he knows. Uh, we may not be able to sway his mind until we get there. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna head up to bed. Oh, have a good night. Do a little thing. I'll like cuddle my pack, sort of like protectively, so no one can steal anything, or so it would be hard. Do you have you take off any of your equipment or clothing to sleep? Probably take off my shirt. I'll take off my leather armor. Okay. And my kilt. You're not wearing armor, are you? No. no. So you're shirtless, you're just wearing pants? Yep. Are those hose like he's wearing, or are they some different kind of style? I would imagine different kind of style. So are they like normal, conventional, 21st century pants that are joined in the crotch? Or... Yeah. Yeah, kind of trousers okay. like that. And it's sort of a newer newer fashion. Trying to... Um, from our elf from the... What is our talk man wearing on his legs? He's a kilt. He's a kilt, of I'm taking everything out like and wrapping it together. Oh, no. I feel like a dumb person. <laughs> he told me that. He oh. did. DM cracks for the first time. All right. Not the last. That's for certain. The wine's helping, for sure. Uh, so you two, you're cuddling with your pack. You're sort of in the hay shirtless. That sounds like a terrible idea, but all right. <laughs> He's going to have fun in the morning. Kind of <laughs> laying on my shirt, I guess, would yeah. be uh, a good you idea. You have your cloak, too, so if you want to lay on that, you can. Yeah. It's spring, and it's night, so it's a bit cool out, for sure. So you, you might crave a blanket, especially if you're shirtless. What a cuddly duck. <laughs> that in character? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it's, it co- in it's character. cold out. <laughs> That's what we said it in character. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was cuddling someone. <laughs> that was definitely not a Scottish accent I was doing. It was somewhere between Dutch and German. <sighs> All right, so we go to uh, sleep for the evening. Yeah, um... We could do wisdom checks if you guys want to, to see if you guys manage to wake up before dawn. Because it is not normal to wake up before dawn. Like, um, you know. So, uh, the elephant sleeping first dice roll in the campaign <laughs> is a sleep check and he trances. How are we... Oh yeah, you're trancing, aren't you? You're an elf. Well, how is that working? So as an elf, you can trance. 
which means you sort of can just sit there and, and enter a hypnotic state mm-hmm. in which you are aware of your surroundings loosely. That means you don't need to lie down in this haystack and sleep if you don't want to. You can enter a trance laying down if you want to, but you don't need to. Yeah. You can you can be in a seated or standing position. Standing might be a bit trickier. Yeah, I'd probably lie down in trance. That also or, means uh, you only need um, what, four to six hours? Four hours? Four. I think it's four. Yeah, I think it's four. Okay. Um, that sounds reasonable. I believe it, uh, that's half of the traditional eight hours, so mm-hmm. that makes sense. Um, I'm not going to bother looking that up, because I don't care. What a good thing for a DM to say. <laughs> and then I'd be able to wake up. For uh, sure. Which sure means you could, time. you're aware of the, the end time. of your hypnosis would be, at this point, probably about 6, 6.30, yeah. which in spring should be just before dawn, if that makes sense to you guys, which it does to me. Yeah, yeah it does. I'm seeing some nods. Time-wise, yeah. So you guys basically don't need to make that check. E- Jay, you can if you want to. Kevin, you certainly can if you want to. It's pretty You're normal for me to be up there. Is it? All right. In that case, I won't make you make that check. I'm thinking the early morning makes sense, too. Yeah. Okay. I just got to tend to the donkey. So. You can all explain that in a narrative context. Um, what was your... What do you wake up for? With your I got to tend to that donkey and then get into the shop and all that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Because you're the wizard school. Apprentice. I don't need to do it. <laughs> Thumbs up, pal. I gotta say that because I can't just make the gesture. So you all wake up fairly early in the morning, much as Puck the Duck commanded of you. My DeviantArt account for those listening. Um, gotta plug that as many times as I can. Lots of smiles from the uh, the players who are already annoyed with me. So you guys all wake up early in the morning. Are there any? Um, let's start with you because you're upstairs by yourself. Right. Are there any morning rituals you want to undertake? I didn't ask you what your room was like or how you fell asleep. You can do that if you want to. You can explain that to us. Uh, if yeah. you want to. I mean, it's a relatively simplistic room. Okay. Uh, I'm not the only one who boards here. So, so you're sharing a uh, room? Yeah, probably. Um, you can just say that. I don't mind. I'm definitely sharing the upper floor with people. Uh, mainly the Mainly the butcher who actually owns the shop. Mm-hmm. So I'd have a single room off to the side, which has just enough room for somewhere to store some clothes. That would be a chunk of the end of the bed. Okay. A bed, which would be a straw mattress type of okay. stuffing like thing in a box. Work. And yeah, yeah. a general blanket thrown over top. Uh, and a pillow basin. Probably have to do the chamber pot idea because... Sure. And dump that somewhere else. Yeah, and you probably have to go into the hallway yeah. to find a window. Yeah. Other than that, there's not much worth doing in here. I would have fell asleep on the bed, just out of everything except for undergarments, and that would be your night clothes idea. Okay. Uh, wake up, uh, basin of water on. Probably have to go get that. Throw some on. Wake up that type of way. Okay. Uh, breakfast would be after attending to the donkey, so that would be done. So, so basically, you. You probably wake up. You're probably going to wash yourself in the trough in the stables rather than your yeah. room. Yeah. Um, just because you said you had to fetch water. Yeah. So I'm going to say you probably wake up, quickly pull on clothes, and head downstairs to the stables. Yeah. Easy. I'd throw on my work clothes, which is our heavier set version of most of what I described okay. yesterday. So you're probably wearing that wool tunic now. Um, <laughs> not that. Okay. Same tunic as before, but nice. uh, the pants turned into nice. a heavier variation in my heavy, heavy leather boots. Um, and it's going to a corded belt rather than an actual knife's weapon. probably on now. I have a dagger. Yeah, that is definitely on, along with the two water skins. Just one dagger? Uh, yeah. I think point. that's relevant because you have throwing knives. Is no, boot dagger. dagger. Disappointed. Yeah. I don't need to do that in the city. Like, I got two more knives that I know where they go as soon as we start adventuring. This punk has been living I believe soft you were life. told that you were meeting up to go on an adventure today. Yeah, but not until after I clean the stables. I have till noon to do that. But there are two adventures in the stables right now. Okay, <laughs> so you head downstairs, and let's see what sight they meet. Um, you so guys I have rituals? been awake for a little longer. Okay. Um, I would like to cast Speak with Animals. All right. So I'm going to talk with the different beasts. Are here. you casting that as a ritual or as a spell? Uh, what's the difference? A ritual takes about five to ten minutes. What does Speak with Animals cost you? Do you have the page number for it? I do not. Okay, I'll uh, have to look it up. BS, though. Well, it's, it's going to be under S for Speak with Animals. Um, it just, spells should have components to them in this mm. game. Ah. Which is basically something you need to buy. Speak with Animals, Ritual is a possibility. Well, in this case, vocation. it does not have an element, which is good. It's a 10-minute duration. 
It is a ritual which takes 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so do you want to describe what that kind of ritual is to prepare yourself? So, so basically, you can cast this as a spell, which uses one of your spells per day. Yes. That you have as a, uh, a druid, almost a ranger. It's interesting, we've got a full party of spellcasters for Tor. He doesn't ranger. have spells yet, though. Well, he would from yesterday. He hasn't cast him yesterday. He does. Jay does not, no. Um, that is to say, Angus does not have any spells yet. One He's day. Only first level. So you can cast as a spell. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be one of your spells per day as a druid, which means you would have less spells to cast later in your adventure. You presume, if you if you end up going on this dungeon crawl with um, Pock and Zog and the rest of the party. But a ritual doesn't expend it. And it would make sense to do a ritual here because you have time. It, it would. would. So uh, I would be probably uh, standing in the middle of all these beasts, probably mm-hmm. trying to listen to their spirits. For sure, but is there is there a way you prepare yourself physically or, or like a description? Some time. kind of chant you do maybe or or rub dirt over your face. Yeah, any kind of ritual, like physical ritual. Um, if you can't think of one that's fine, just tell me. And we can we, you can think of one later maybe if you have time to. Yeah. I don't know. I'll think on it about uh, what this ritual entails. Alright, sure. Um, so you undertake this ritual, whatever it is you end up signing on. For the 10 minutes, um, the doc stays quiet for this, presumably, because you're screeching, hopefully. Um, well, and he's asleep, asleep at this point. Uh, so are the horses, to be fair. Ah. Uh, so you have to wake them up. <laughs> do you want to not do the ritual now that you know that? <laughs> no, that's fine. That was information I didn't give you, so I should give you that before you take it. So you have engaged in this ritual. Yes. You feel the power surge within you, the, the, the power to speak with animals. Your, your mind becomes clearer. You feel a connection with them as if they were, were people in a, in a much more present and spiritual sense. Like, you, as an animist, you already feel that connection in a, in a day-to-day state mm-hmm. um, with animals. Like, you understand that animals have the same emotions as people. You understand that animals have the same intelligence as people. You understand it's just different slightly based on their um, immediate needs and instincts, mm-hmm. which are different than humans or elves or whatever. But now you feel that you can bridge that gap. In a, in a very present way. You feel as if you are a horse, you are a donkey, you are a tiger, you are an elephant, you are a deer. Anything that you could need to, to be part of, you are part of. And you are that for 10 minutes. <laughs> so what are you doing? I'm going to walk up to uh, one of the mules. Yeah, it's 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 sleeping, standing up. One second, I'm going to roll a dice here to see which mule it is. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, pet that mule uh, very softly, very calmly, and whisper calm thoughts at it uh, slowly to wake it up. All right. Gently you whisper to it. You, you, you feel it as much as see it move in response to your words. And you can almost feel the energy of your hand as you begin to approach it. Um, your words preceding your, your, your touch. Mm-hmm. Um, and you touch it and you can feel that connection made with it. It's, it's as if you're a part of that animal when your hand graces its side. And you can, you can feel one of its eyes flick open and it turns its head to you. Its eyes are still half closed with sleep as it stares at you. And it mumbles, well, What? Uh, child, who is your caretaker? Klaus, the, the apprentice butcher. He, he feeds me. He feeds all the, the horses here. Or he feeds them all. He's a good caretaker. Are you ready for, for breakfast? No, the horse nods and says, Breakfast. Is it, is it breakfast already? It's an early breakfast. We have a, a big day ahead. I like early breakfast, and the the, the, horror, the the donkey turns to you and sort of licks at your face, and the, sort of pads the ground eagerly with its hooves. Yes, so I'll go get some some of the hay and uh, any other uh, scraps I can find around. The donkey greedily eats eats of the hay. The other animals are all asleep still, <laughs> and you're hand feeding this animal. Yeah. And at that, after a little while there, after the sure. my ritual ends, I'll go wake the the duck man, and uh, and I think around that time, uh, Klaus will probably come down. So you you feed the animal, and it sort of nuzzles your hand, um, as you like are very gentle and caring with it, and you close it away um, as you go to a good day, and it sort of stares sleepily at the other horses and, and donkeys and mules in the, in the room, and it stares at you, and you gently push our friend Angus awake. So, Angus, uh, you're dreaming. Yeah. Um, Would you like me to describe dreaming that dream? About, um, I was actually going to give you one, but Wonderful. you have one in mind. You can't no, no, it. you should describe it. Um, I don't have control of You this. are deep in the woods south of Holenhof. 
Um, you are hunting something, but you can't remember what. You can see the dogs in front of you. You're running through the underbrush. You can feel the branches scraping your feathers and your skin as you run through the dark, sort of morning twilight of an early hunt. Um, and you're running, and you're running, and you're running after these, these animals as they snarl and bite and, and jump through the leaves. Um, and you feel alive. And suddenly you're pulled away from them by something. Uh, it, it's almost as if something grabs your shoulder as you're running and stops you dead in your tracks. And you can see the animals dash away from you through the underbrush. And suddenly you're, you're lying in, in a pile of hay. Your body's itchy. And there is a, a familiar face staring down at you. Oh, like so Serene um, in expression, I imagine. You feel that's not yeah, very calm. Yeah, okay. like Joel Todd, like, oh, wait, what is going on? It is uh, dawn. Uh, I guess it's time to get up, uh, get moving. Fine. I'll take off my shirt, head over to the uh, trough, and start taking a bath and preening myself. Great. So when you come downstairs, Angus is almost finished his bath. As um, what would you be doing while taking a bath? Anything? Specifically, if not, not just fine. uh, just you know, meditating maybe. Just yeah, to, uh, while the elf is sort of staring at him, I'll be uh, standing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you see. <laughs> I'll be standing uh, right next to his uh, his yeah. donkey. You uh, you changed the water out before you did that. It, uh, I was pretty dirty. It's fine. Yeah, it was cleaner than I was. You see, Elsa, your donkey, sort of awake, calmly staring at, at the two, while all the other horses are still asleep. Or just starting to wake up. Yeah. Why is he awake? You guys bug him? I just got up. I had a, a morning chat with him. A very, very nice... Uh, I, sure rolled a, I rolled a one on the dice. It was your donkey. <laughs> I'm happy. Pretty sure I told you not to bug the donkey? I didn't bug the donkey. Yeah, he is not bugged. He's, he's very happy, very... Uh, he does look very calm. I thought you said he had bad temper. He can. I think maybe you're he bad at training can. animals. Maybe you need us. Yeah, maybe. Can you get out of the trough? I gotta fill yes, that. Yes, yes, I'm done. Don't yes. worry, don't worry. And then proceed to fill the trough. Bathe myself in it quickly. Yep. In the fresh water instead of the donkey water. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the water slid off of Angus anyway because he's a duck. Yeah. And his feathers are covered in oil <laughs> to keep water out. But, yeah. Do the uh, do the musical chair shuffle through all the stalls, muck them, mm-hmm. give the horses and donkeys a wipe down, yeah. and throw fresh hay. When and you then feed. when you open Elsa's, which is your donkey's stall, um, for those who are listening, tentatively, um, and sort of herd him out to clean it out, you and also you, um, General Lucio or Jack, see that he becomes tense, almost as if he's waking up from a dream, like he's entered into the real world or something. Now that like p- familiar things are happening to him, he does days you open the door and like pat at him and immediately tense up. And you you knew how you know how to handle him, um, so you managed to get. I assume it's a e. If you want, to yes, it issue, is. Fine. Um, I should have asked that. To be fair, um, you guide that donkey him out of the stable and, and clean up, and you do your morning routine. I'm not going to make you roll or anything for that because you've done it every friggin' day of your life for the past four years or so. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he doesn't seem to like that. I see him now. He doesn't like tense. a lot of things. But he's the only one I've got, and he does the job. So I try and take care of him and hope that goes away. We're working on it slowly. So the various horses are let out into the main room. Are you, like, going near them, either of you? I mean, I'll help him with it's my hands. It's one of the time like type of deal. Okay. I don't need them. I am just familiar with animal handling. This is what I did for my life. Do you want to make animal handling check for these various animals? Sure, if you want. Just roll a d20 for me and... There was a wisdom. It is. And your proficiency. That's a decent roll, so I think you'll be fine. Yeah. So, animal handling, you said? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 16. Okay. So, yeah, you handle the various horses. The only one I'm going to mention, because it's the most relevant, is Elsa. Or Essel, even. I think it was Essel. <laughs> I think it is Essel. I'm going to give you mispronouncing this whole time. That's fine. I'm smiling. Um, you notice that his hooves rise up a couple of times as you're sort of maneuvering him about the, the stable. Like every now and then one of his hooves back who says like jumps up and like then, then calms Keep down in again. front of him. Of course. Is the only he is, he is definitely Yeah, he's him doing more. it properly. It's just a general statement. <clears throat> For sure. This is fun. I am was part of the stables. 
This is fun. So you say Very experienced. Very experienced. I'm just making sure. I'll try and do this quickly. So I continue to clean out a stable. Yep. So the morning chores are finished, and you guys are... Round one of the morning chores. Round one of the morning chores are finished, and you guys are free in the stables. What's uh, what's chores to Charles? Um, but either of you get a... You said last night one of you got a better look at that map and what was written on it. Yeah. I believe it was you. Yeah. Uh, indicating I was me familiar else. with some of the, uh, the pictograms. Would you be able to reproduce them? Can you, as a player, reproduce them? I told you what they were. <laughs> Here, let me uh, draw them in the ground. Uh, we'll use paper, but I'm more interested in the fact that you can do it. Ah, uh, yes. All right. I'm not going to tell you what they were, just so you know. You'll have to do them from memory. Okay. You wrote them down already? I wrote them down. High five. Cheater. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to, in that case, go back upstairs and come back down later with a... Um, Charcoal pencil and some paper. I will say that is a house rule that I normally like to use, but I have we have not put that in our house rules list yet. Is if you have paper, you need to have paper. Yeah. So if you're normally as a house rule, I like to say that if you're taking notes on paper as a player, your character needs to be able to take notes in paper as a character. Ah. Um, but we have not written that in the house rules yet, and so you are fine doing that, Ian, for your character, Jack. If you really want to, I don't care. Um, I should have mentioned it if I wanted to bring it in. And frankly, after the um, the last mystery game we did, it led to a lot of forgotten facts that yeah. slowed the game down. So yeah, um, if you can reproduce those, I will get some paper and a way to do so before going into the butcher shop properly to start opening it up. Uh, I'll point to a spot behind the counter with a ta- with a chair where you'll be out of the way, and you can go ahead and try and reproduce those for me. Uh, well, I do my basic setup, which is just putting a few things I mean, up. you could be doing this while you're doing the stables, to be fair. And reproducing it? Yeah. Yeah, he could have, but I didn't mention it until that afterwards. That is very true. Thank you. So, so what, is the order current, here. what is the current job you're doing? I'm just setting up the main, so pulling out a couple of things. Probably setting right. up the main display do by you, the window. Do you have in mind... Who your sort of boss was in this this butcher shop? Your master? Um, I had because I have an idea. If you don't go, go. If you have a better idea, go for it. Um, I was imagining this was sort of a father figure for you, probably. Um, yeah. a fairly like jovial, I imagine, a larger man who sort of understood the, the stress you were going under and was harsh with you to make sure that you did your job properly, but was was definitely a, a generally beneficial aspect of your life. Which is, we all know as players, um, who are used to Torrent, rare yeah. for the setting. So I imagine this wasn't a particularly abusive master for you, and probably a, a person who you respect. That I mean, I'll leave that up to you. I was thinking along the same lines, so yeah, this is good. So you might come in and start doing those chores, and he'll meet you halfway through and greet you and ask you how your, your graduation went. Uh, pretty well. I seem to have made a new friend, indicating the elf sitting behind the counter in yeah. the shop. Uh, and another one who spent the night in the stable of that. Yes, he's a strange one. What's uh, your name, Elf? Uh, Jack. Jack, it's a good name. It's good to meet you. He, he proffers a, a fat hand. Kind of put my hand out. He shakes your hand. It's a hard shake, a hard grip. His hand is large and it engulfs yours. Uh, he's big, uh, both in terms of height and width. And he says, uh, have you, uh, have you got a job for your Graduation? Yeah, I have to head north to... Good, that's good! He interrupts you. It's about time you did that uh, journey, man. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah! Get out of this city, get out of here! It's time for birds to leave the nest, yeah? That was the idea. So, do you need anything? I have most of my stuff already prepared. Ah, he sort of punches you in the arm. And I've been saving a little extra for... Good man, good boy. I knew you would have it in you. You taught me pretty well. <laughs> he's beaming at you. Um, he's definitely very proud of you, although he doesn't say it. Um, and you might not recognize this character. That's good. That's great. And he says, um, why don't you um, leave your chores for today? I can have my shop boy do it. You, you spend some time with your friend, yeah? 
Get your things together. All right. Uh, your journeymanship to... starts now. Nice. <laughs> do you have those uh, copied out? I do. They actually probably would have looked better had I drawn them in the dirt, but they're they're scribbled down here. For sure. What did you give him to write on the parchment with? Charcoal pencil. Okay. I so have you ink, but... have you ever used a charcoal pencil before? You made a charcoal rubbing earlier of the map and the tomb, so I assume it's something you're familiar with. Yes, uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, familiar with uh, how it works. All right. So how do you hold the charcoal pencil as a character? You know, big grab my fist. Just the fist. It. Yeah. The fist uh, of... Yeah. Okay. So they're big drawings. Yeah. Can I just pass in the sheet? Uh, no, I'd no. like to explain it. Okay. No. So uh, this one here, it's an uh, it's an arrow pointing down. Let's uh, do this somewhere else. Not in the shop. Oh, okay. So the your head butcher is just busy with his apron on, just like un, like lowering like the front window, yelling at his like eight year old or not eight year old but like ten to eleven year old son to get meat out of the the basement to put on display and she knocked those up before. and some more things <laughs> just to get the place busy. But these are basically chores that you've been doing for the past four years, and it probably does rankle with you that he's doing them now. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I'll do the one more that I can do, and he can yeah. later. Or later. Sure. Just to show him up. It's <laughs> not those kid. That's <laughs> what I mumble as we leave out the back. <laughs> you get some dagger eyes from the kid <laughs> as you leave. You know, a rivalry there, let's see, between this 20, 25 or so year old man, wizard, <laughs> and 11 year old kid. <laughs> Apprentice. Hey, beat that kid. Uh, <laughs> You're not petty at all. Who said that? All right. Um, um, what well, what would be that job? Do you have anything specific or not? My last one? Yeah, for your last job. I'm, I'm topping up the freezer. Okay. Below. And sure. that's definitely something he can't do. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. If, uh, in that case, Angus, you want to come up too? We should do this upstairs. Of course. I'll lead you guys into the small no, closet. I must confess, I can't read. That's fine. Good. I'll be doing the reading, Perfect. hopefully. Uh, so you've got a copy of these symbols. So I just want to set the scene here. You guys have gone upstairs to your room? Yeah, right? and we're in the broom closet that is my room. So you guys are all clustered quite tightly together into his room, which includes a bed with a chest on the bottom. There's maybe a half foot to a foot of space next to that bed. Yeah. So... Two of you are probably sitting on it. Yeah. One of you is probably by the door. I'll take by the door. Um, uh, before I let you guys in, I need to go in and grab a couple of things out of the chest. So, like, we're really... It's a tight room here, so give me a second to prepare it. And then, uh, after I'm done, I let you both in. Yes. And you guys can sit on the bed. I need the drawing from you in a couple of minutes to do some magic stuff. You see, this... First one, I don't care. I'm not right now. I need to do my magic stuff first. Maybe I should draw. I don't care. <laughs> so the first one is a down arrow with a oh crap. Again, Morgan, you should let me do the other part first. Yes, do your favorite part first. Sorry, I apologize. Oh, it's just because that's my action matter. Um. So yeah, I got a collection of interesting things in front of me. Uh, a small. What, what would be a common metal around here? For a so, bowl or tin? Tin, maybe? For for what specifically? For a bowl. A bowl? Copper or tin? Um, yeah. For, for a metal bowl specifically? Not a ceramic one? Yeah. Yeah, either copper or tin would work. Bronze, maybe, too. Those are all would all be fairly cheap metals. Tin would probably be cheaper than, than copper or bronze, but only just. I don't even know if that would be true. Mm-hmm. Those would all be reasonable for you to have. If you, if you mm-hmm. don't want a ceramic or wooden bowl. I'll go with the copper, and okay. we'll call it that. Uh, so I got a copper bowl, a small rolled up piece of paper, I think a strip, like maybe an inch thick, rolled a couple of times, pen, and a dagger out, because I gotta do the whole ritual thing. So this is my ritual cast of Comprehend Language. Yes. Okay. Which pretty much, unfortunately, rituals are supposed to take 10 minutes, and I'm not thinking all of that out. But it involves yeah. uh, a small nick on my finger, adding the blood to the ink, writing understand in draconic wormish, I believe is your yeah. version of draconic. Wormish, yeah, or wormish. On the piece of paper, setting it into the bowl, adding water out of a skin, which I forgot to mention I had, to that, mm-hmm. 
freezing it, melting it again, the paper disappears during that act. Dipping my hand in it, rubbing it over my ears, and then drinking the water. Cool. To, uh, and then washing my hands in the bowl of what's, sorry, washing my hands, then drinking the water of what's left. That would be very bad if I screwed that up. Okay. So... Um, are you finished or? Yeah, that's the entire that's the ritual. That's the ritual. So you two guys have definitely seen some magic shit. Neither of you can read or write or speak Wormish. I doubt either of you have ever particularly seen Draconic or Wormish as a language. No. So what he is writing and what he is writing it in is probably incredibly foreign to you. Yeah. I'd probably speak a couple words too. <clears throat> to, to the point to the point where you can't identify it. Hear, um, understand, and speak. No, you're an understanding. Would be the two okay. words. So you've done comprehend language. He has written these symbols down, and then I like, place my hands on <laughs> your organs. copy of them and try to read them myself. I'm not actually sure if this would work at all. It's going to be a DM discretion thing, but I'm going to try and get my own understanding of them. Do you want to do yours. an intelligence check for me yet to see how well you remembered them? Of course, because partially this is my fault for not explaining them well. This needs to be drawn. So we got a 19. Fucking good roll. Good <laughs> ass roll. <laughs> Minus we got one for <laughs> intelligence. So that's 18. Yeah, so you pretty much got him spot on. Um, which means your comprehend language will pretty much work. Okay. Um, which means I will give you their actual meaning. Old Elven pictograph meanings. Because they are in Old Elven. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell that from your comprehend language. But no, I, I, I will say it. What language I don't really care. Comprehend language. That's a good spell. Yeah, I had to take a freaking ritual cast of feet just to grab it. Tavern Brawl was better. Oh, Sorry, you be able to best. cast it as a ritual. But in a game where we don't use perception, it doesn't really matter. Nothing beats punching people in the face. Still do that without Tavern Brawl. Not as well. So, the first, the arrow pointing downwards with a line from it, um, means a southern port specifically. The second is definitely a pointing rock. The third is definitely a portal. These lines should be... Uh, the, the lines coming from the pyramid are vertical rather than horizontal, as Ian has drawn them. Um, again, I didn't specify that, so that's my fault. The picture of the flower is definitely a poisonous flower, as Jack, or Ian's character, has said that it is, and Puck has confirmed. You can tell that by these uh, lines on their, uh, their petals, mm. as well as the... Uh, the yeah, design in the middle that's kind of like a diamond. Yeah, Jack um, very carefully informs you of that with his knowledge of herbalism. Five, uh, you, you probably would have recognized that flower even if you didn't have knowledge of the pectograms, just because it is a, a, a drawing of a specific flower mm -hmm. that is native to the region. Finally, the last one, this one here with the line, with the cluster line coming from it, like it's, uh, the spokes of a wheel, does definitely mean an elder tree. So, Jack's interpretation is pretty much perfect. You can just make sure that you know. Like, you know for, for sure, whereas he had sort of a gray area. Like, I'm not actually sure if this is what Well, uh, that's, uh, that's the thing with this last picture. I'm, I'm not uh, yes. really sure what that is. That is a tomb. Uh, Sorry for, for not describing what that image was. I didn't have it written down in my notes. I forgot it. <laughs> Poison flower. Well, might add to the... Uh, the lack of clarity in that, uh, that Do picture. I get any more or less information than he got from his? So, like, that is a fey portal? That mm. is a... No, but Jack might mention that each of these drawings was associated with writing that he couldn't read, which would probably give more information. Pictograms are intentionally vague. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our, uh, our duck fellow, Puck, Believes this to be a church. That's maybe you could an elder tree. Yes, uh, uh, maybe you could see a resemblance to some sort of religion, human religion. I can touch in on that actually, if you guys are curious. The symbol of the church is a star. Um, that is the eternal fire of a star. This being uh, the, the church of humans being a fire worshiping church. So each steeple is topped with that eight branched star, which the spoke wheels are supposed to mimic. If you look at certain towns on my Taurith map, you can find it. Pot the Duck on DeviantArt. <laughs> or my um, Siegwitzgracht map. Um, also pretty much every village on the Siegwitzgracht map is 
a picture of a church with a Roman arch and that star on the top of it. So it is not at all a stretch that Puck sees that as a church, assuming it was a human pictogram and not an elven one. The other thing is he thinks this is a fountain, which uh, that's that's a lot more dangerous misconception. So if he somehow got tangled in that yeah. uh, portal, that could send him somewhere very bad. I perhaps. wish we knew where that portal went or uh, what it was connected to. Yep. Is it clear whether we go past the portal or whether we're supposed to enter the So portal? the map has dotted lines connecting all these symbols. The dotted lines don't change shape and they don't change color between them. They stay like a monotone black on parchment. So you can theorize about what that means as much as you want. So, southern port. We have no idea which southern port without getting our hands on the map. Pointing mm-hmm. rock, again, same problem. Portal to what or where or by, controlled by who? No idea. Poison flower. We don't even know what type of poison flower it is. Uh, Jack can I specifically identify the flower. I just didn't name it. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. But oh. if you want to propose a name for it, you can. Um, but you definitely do know as a party what kind of flower it is. Yeah. Okay. And we're going for Twisted Tulip. We Sure, yeah. that works. I was going to say so, Weeping Maiden or something, but that's fine. So we got a Twisted Tulip. I don't want that name. Neither do I, but he <laughs> came up with it. He's the one that identified you, you, you it, you so he is the discoverer. So. I did let him do it. This is my punishment for being lazy. To an elder tree, who the hell knows what that's supposed to be? Uh, to a tomb. I think I think Jack knows what that's supposed to be culturally, <laughs> but all right. That's my character. Yes, character. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just yelled at me earlier. About I know. All I know. <laughs> I've had too much wine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I'm on like my fifth class. <laughs> I finished the bottle. Solo. Solo. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys have anything to add in, to that ter- interpretation? I'm basically this? sitting there just nodding my head, <laughs> nothing being said. <laughs> like, oh, yes, I see it now, yeah, I see it. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely poisonous flower, we learned that, yeah. It's like a Call of Cthulhu game. Well, I'd love to get my hands on these. This is like $25. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an idiot. <laughs> it was good, though. You guys think that would be possible? Get your hands on a copy of the map? Um, or the actual one. Oh. I can't magically create another one. Oh. Uh, well, we could ask to see it again. Uh, yeah, hopefully. he didn't seem too concerned about actually giving it over, even for a couple minutes, just to do what I did. Which would have been helpful, because yeah. he can't read it. Well, I'll we'll talk to him in the mornings. We should be going soon, too. Yeah, yeah I got a couple more things I gotta do around town before I meet up with them. Well, we don't want them leaving, that happens. Remember, I've got it's big said shares in this town. That we're supposed to be, meet up at like 9 right now. Someone wrote that down, right? No, no, that's, that was the misconception. You can leave at noon today after we get the treasure. Oh, oh dear God, it's done. We need to go, man. Yeah, right. we should get going. <laughs> I leave. <laughs> Alright. Thank Christ. <laughs> okay. Totally great. <laughs> so Angus is leaving. Is anybody else in the party fucking leaving? Nope. Yeah, I'm gonna follow him. Uh, are you sure you're not coming? Oh, we- uh, yeah, but I need to actually get ready first. Unlike you, I didn't carry my entire belongings on my back to get here. Okay, well, uh, run run after us. I feel like that Still was a failed insult to what for. Yeah, why did he take so long with that magic thingy? You did the same magic thing earlier. I just described it. You're not aware of that. And maybe he's a bad sense of time, and I'm not aware of that either. Oh. You guys are going to be knifing each other by the third session. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs>